Hey everyone, I'm Tyler Weingartner and welcome to the ninth episode of Make Live this year. Um, the, if you're not familiar with it, Make Live is a series that we do where we build projects live uh, right here uh, in our studio. Uh, that Projects could, that come straight out of the pages of Make Magazine. And of course, this series wouldn't be possible without our help from our friends at DigiKey. If you're not familiar with them, DigiKey is an electronics distributor here in the U.S. Um, they ship very fast. You can uh, purchase all of the electronic components you need to build this project. And uh, they ship, like I said, very fast. If you uh, get an order in by about mid-afternoon, it'll ship out that same day. Some days, sometimes it'll even be out to you the very next day. Uh, so they're wonderful to work with. They make this series possible, and uh, we're lucky to have them. So what are we building today? Uh, we are building... Uh, a project uh, created by uh, well created by our guest here today, uh, who is um, John Edgar Park. Hello. Hello. Uh, so, what are we building today, John? Yeah. So we're going to build a version of my cold brew coffee tower. I think we called it the behemoth or colossal or something. But uh, let me zoom my camera out. You can see here. I've brought mine from uh, inside the house to my workshop, so I built a little temporary wall because uh, this is a wall-mounted coffee tower. So uh, the idea behind this is when you want to make cold brew coffee, uh, if you've ever done cold brew coffee with a little setup in your kitchen or in your refrigerator, uh, it's a simple way to make really delicious coffee, but you also generally make a pretty small volume of it. Uh, so I wanted to create a system that would allow me to make a heck of a lot more. So. Uh, about two liters uh, at a time, actually. Here's my um, carafe that I got for, for making it in. Um, and so the, uh, the setup that I did is so big, I didn't want to end up sticking it on a table somewhere or building some kind of a tower for it because I figured it could fall over. And what counter do I have in my house where I could put it? So instead, I made it as this little modular setup that can just be screwed into the wall with some anchor screws. Um, the one piece uh, that I didn't even have room here just because of the piece of MDF I was using. Um, I didn't have room to insert this unnecessarily cool coil uh, into it, but the idea behind it is that um, the ice water lives up here. The controller that uh, Tyler's gonna build today uh, uses a, an Arduino to control the timing of drips through the solenoid valve. This part right here contains uh, coffee grounds, so I'll go ahead and dump them in. Why not? I can start making some. They won't. This won't be ready until tomorrow morning, but you know, uh, better late than never. And so about 200 grams of coffee grounds go in here. Uh, usually I'll wet those. I didn't right now. Um, I'll probably go back and do that. If you don't wet it, then sometimes the water just finds one little path to travel down. Uh, and it's almost guaranteed that's what it'll do. Right. I'm so putting a little cloth filter here. Pre-wetting the ground just makes the water, you know, kind of filter through a lot better. Yeah, everywhere. You just want the water to get everywhere so that it doesn't just extract everything out of a little channel and, and then you'd get water coming out the bottom. Um, and so then in the, uh, the setup that I did that I have inside, I have a little demo here of this guy, which is, I'm not using it the way it is. This is like a gram condenser. So normally you'd pipe like cold water through these two little valves and then whatever's going through the middle gets cooled. Um, all ours does is this cool little demo of water, of uh, coffee spiraling through. Yeah, well, that, looking cool is almost as part, is almost as much, almost as good as being cool. I think I wouldn't, so, yeah. I wouldn't know because I've never done either of those things. Oh, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. But uh, yeah, so that's that's what we're going to build today. That's what uh, this setup is. Yeah. And it's a, it's a project I built for Make Magazine, and it's on uh, on the website as a uh, Make project that you can go check out how to build. Right. And if you check out the link in the description below, you can find a shopping cart uh, with all the components, all the electronic components that um, we are using to build this. Well, actually, that's only partially true. Um, but uh, first, you take a look at the setup that I have as it's starting to come together here. Uh, it's almost the same as John's, although we've omitted the entire gram condenser um, because we, we're not going to bother with looking cool today. Uh, also, I, we had just some limited wall space, so we just have the, um, the coffee grounds up here, and it's coming right down into our flask that's going to capture our, our cold brew coffee. And if you look a little bit further up, we have our shelf, which is going to be waiting for um, the 
uh, the carafe that's going to hold all the water and also where we're going to be plugging in the solenoid valve uh, that's going to control our water flow. Um, I like your red acrylic. That's very make. Yeah. I, uh, I was at tech shop last night uh, getting this ready to cut. I'm like, what am I going to use? Well, might as well go with something that's, that's a branded color. I was originally going to go with uh, plywood, a little eighth inch, oh, cool. eighth inch plywood, but they did not have much of that on hand. So acrylic it is. Um, so why, to go, why go to all, all this trouble for cold brew coffee? Um, what is it that, that's so special about this kind of coffee? Um, well, cold brew is uh, really, really low in acidity. Uh, by, by brewing it with essentially time uh, rather than heat, um, you don't extract as much acidity typically into your coffee. I don't know the science or the chemistry behind why that is, but uh, that's generally considered to be the, the reason uh, people uh, like cold brew. So if you've ever tried to make an iced coffee by brewing coffee in a normal heat-based method, either you know a shot of espresso thrown on ice or uh, brewed just in a regular drip or pour over, and then ice it. There is something about it that does not taste uh, like iced coffee. It doesn't taste as good as what we come to expect from, from iced coffee, and I think the acidity is it. So uh, when you brew with, uh, you know, typically, like I said, this will be anywhere from eight hours to 12 hours. Um, for, for this amount, but even in smaller uh, overnight kind of toddies that you could put in your fridge, it's hours and hours. So um, we want to control how much water is going through. We want it to be a really, really slow drip. I, you probably can't hear the clicks on mine right now, but I, what I did was I hooked mine up to my uh, laptop here. The Arduino I have um, controlled. I, I'm looking at the serial port uh, to see um, my timings of opening and closing. And I built the project. There's two ways you can use it. There's a couple knobs here you can use for the interval between uh, drips and how much uh, time one drip is open for. I've messed around with those settings rather than using a potentiometer. I actually set mine to 30 seconds right now. So it's every 30 seconds. Now, typically when you make cold brew, it's like a drip a second. Um, the issue with that is if you just get a little ball valve or a petcock valve to control the drip in a cold brew, what I noticed, I have a nice little uh, set up from a Japanese company called Hario, it really varies. Like you'll tell it to drip every second and you'll set it and you'll, and you'll go away and it just drifts a little bit and all of a sudden it's like twice as fast that it's dripping or it's slower. Uh, so that was actually the primary motivation behind doing it with this seemingly unnecessarily complex solenoid is you can actually control pretty exactly how long it's going to take for it to drop that, that water through and brew the coffee. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, my method of, uh, my usual method of uh, making iced coffee is using a device called an AeroPress. Um, there's an easy way you can do that where uh, you brew it, you are brewing it hot, and then, um, so it's sort of this thing that's a cross between a, it's almost like a French press. Um, mm -hmm. But then if you actually press the concentrated coffee, because um, normally you press it and it's super concentrated coffee, you add water to it. Uh, when I'm making iced coffee with it, I am uh, compressing it over a bunch of ice cubes. So it's melting mm -hmm. as it's diluting. It's not yeah. as good as cold brew, um, uh, but it's better than just, you know, icing hot coffee. Oh, yeah. I've been curious about that because I know that there's a method that I, I haven't tried that people do where they are brewing coffee. And as I think they're brewing it with heat, but as it's brewing, it's dropping right onto ice. It's a it's a method that was popularized in Japan, I think. Um, so there's a big thing of ice waiting below. And I can't remember if there are devices for this in particular, or everyone's just kind of home brewed their own. But it's a, I've heard that, yeah, this is actually less acidic than brew it hot and then dump it on ice. So there, I think there's something to that, uh, uh, how long it spends being hot. Yeah. Maybe. And if you're looking for a simpler way of making um, uh, cold brew coffee, you can also, um, I mean, I imagine the result is less refined. I've done this a few times, but you can just take, uh, coffee grounds, uh, particularly, there's a particular ratio of coffee grounds to water, and you want to do it with cold water and just put it in a big jar, like a, uh -huh. um, like a big, a like big pickle mace. jar or something like that. Yep. Um, leave that to sit in your refrigerator for like 12 or 24 hours, and then you can take that, filter the coffee grounds out using a coffee filter, and mm -hmm. you've got a pretty good result. But That's um, good. I've made that. Yeah, that's delicious, actually. Yeah, but you do get, I mean, it's a long time to wait for a pretty low return. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, enough about coffee. Let's get into the electronics here. 
And I am going to apologize a little bit up front because I'm not actually going to be building this today the way uh, the project says to build it. And I've got some uh, parts to talk about here. Um, because the, what we're doing here is we're using an Arduino, and this is an Arduino ProtoShield. Uh, so this is where we're going to be doing most of our work today. Um, but we're going to be using Arduino to control a high voltage uh, side of a circuit, and uh, that's the solenoid valve that controls the water flow. Um, and the way John specified in his, uh, his version of the build uses uh, this device here, this component, which is called a MOSFET. Um, the way the MOSFET works is that it basically works like an electronic, electronically controlled switch. If you, um, you basically open and close your circuit on these two pins on the right hand side. This is, see if I can remember my terminology here, the, the middle pin is the drain and the right hand pin is called the source. Um, if anybody, John, do you know why the um, ones are why the pins are called that? Um, yeah, so you've got uh, you've got source um, drain and what's the third one? Control uh, uh, gate. Gate is the one gate. over gate. here on the left hand side. And so, uh, in when the um, when the MOSFET is closed, these two pins here. Uh, do not have uh, continuity between them. But if you apply voltage to this pin, uh, the continuity between these two opens up. Um, and then when you take the voltage away, it, uh, the, basically the voltage drains out of the system and, the, and the, uh, the circuit closes again, or it opens again, rather. Um, however, uh, I, for the life of me, could not get a, could not get this, um, circuit to work correctly in this uh, in this manner. And I believe we've lost John, so let's try and get him back. Let's make sure that I'm still broadcasting. Yep, looks like we still are. Let's stand by while we get John back here. All right, looks like we're getting John back here. Once he's able to reconnect. Anyhow, while we're still waiting for John, um, so as I mentioned, I was not able to get uh, the MOSFET circuit working. I think because I may have ordered a slightly different uh, component than um, what is listed in the article um, component then, However, um, there are a number of different ways of controlling, in the article, using, um, using an Arduino to control uh, the high voltage side of the circuit. Then, However, um, there, there are a number of different ways, ways in the article, using, um, using an Arduino to control uh, the high voltage side of the circuit. Then, However, um, there, there are a number of different ways in the article, using an Arduino to control uh, the high voltage side of the circuit. Then, However, um, there, there are a number of different ways in the article, using an Arduino to control uh, the high voltage uh, side of the circuit. However, um, there, there are a number of different ways in the article, using an Arduino to control the high voltage side of the circuit. However, there are a number of different ways in the article, using an Arduino to control the high voltage side of the circuit. However, there are a number of different ways in the article, using an Arduino to control the high voltage side of the circuit. However, there are a number of different ways in the article, using an Arduino the high voltage component. However, there are a number of different ways 
cured the echo. Please let me know if it is not. And we're still trying to get John back here. Apologize for the feedback loop here, um, but we are... We should be back in order. Um, so, uh, so we're not using the opto isolators today. What we are going to be using is this device called a relay. Um, you're probably familiar with relays. You're certainly familiar with them, with how they sound. Um, you uh, are probably most likely hearing them in your car. Um, restart this one computer to get John back into the call. Um, so the way a relay works is that again you have you. Uh, close the circuit on these two pins on actually this side here, and that fires an electromagnet, electromagnet that closes a switch. It's actually a physical switch uh, in this device, and then that switch can then control um, the circuit for the high voltage side. Uh, and because it's an actual physical uh, switch, uh, it makes a pretty audible click when, uh, when that happens. And you will notice that you will be familiar with the sound largely from the sound of your, um, your turn signals in your car. Uh, each of those is controlled by a relay. And if you've ever had that go out, that's an annoying experience of trying to find the correct relay to get it working again. So anyhow, the relay is what we're going to be using to control this circuit today. Um, and uh, so that's what we're going to be using. Uh, so there's plenty of different ways of controlling the high voltage circuit uh, from a relatively low voltage device like an Arduino. And of course, you don't want the other key thing about that is you want to isolate your 12 volt or higher voltage circuit from the Arduino uh, because that is something that can easily damage the uh, Arduino. In fact, I did that yesterday when uh, experimenting with this circuit. Um, so we're almost back up here. Going to get John back into the call. So just bear with us another moment here while we get him back into the call. And it looks like John may not be able to um, join us anymore. Um, we've been using Hangouts to uh, try and connect with him, and it seems like uh, Hangouts is just completely collapsed on us. Um, but we're going to just keep on going uh, with this build and uh, complete it so we can, uh, we can get into some, some delicious cold beer coffee. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to get this MOSFET out of our way, and um, we're going to start connecting components to it here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, solder down this uh, relay to our board. 
get the soldering iron heated up here. And then we're going to connect all of the connection points that we need for our circuit. And of course, if you have any questions about uh, what we're building here today, um, of course, I am uh, not, well, it looks like uh, John is uh, connected in chat, um, so he'll be able to help out with some of the questions there. Um, but any that I see here, then um, I will uh, I'll answer as best as I can. All right, iron's just about getting up to temperature here. And start soldering these points down. This is the part where normally John would be able to talk while I am soldering. I'm not terribly good at talking while doing fine control stuff like this. But we will manage. And it looks... And the... Video feed has now frozen. And now it's video only, no sound. Um.
All right, are we back with sound? Can you guys hear me? Some people give me a big thumbs up with um, if you are hearing sound. Sound is back. All right. Okay, so um, hopefully we didn't miss too much. Like I said, the last thing I did here was um, solder on this uh, relay to this. Uh, I, th I think somebody's asking me what board this is. Uh, this is not really a board. This is just uh, what's referred to as a, a proto board or a prototyping board that you just stack on, or a prototyping shield, actually. Uh, that you would just plug onto a regular Arduino Uno. Um, so this just has a bunch of circuit traces you can solder things to, like all the components that are going into your project, and then uh, connect them, and then connect them directly to your Arduino. Um, it has a bunch of these kind of tied together uh, circuit traces, you, like you might have on a breadboard, so you can easily make circuits together, or you can do the traditional way, which is just uh, connect components through these holes and then bend the leads over and solder them together. Um, and the next thing we need to do is we need to add a diode over on this side uh, to protect the, um, the uh, ele electromagnetic coil in here from having weird side effects. Uh, okay, so that is what we'll do next. And so this is our diode. Get it down to this level so it'll focus nicely. And a diode is basically just a kind of a one-way street for voltage. Uh, it makes sure that you, uh, voltage can only travel one direction. Um, and it's basically the same circuitry as an LED. In fact, LED stands for light emitting diode. Uh, the only difference there, of course, is that it lights up. Um, and the, there's, if you can see here, there's a little stripe on one side. That is the side, so that voltage travels only in this direction. It can't go back this way. Um, so we will attach it here through these pins. these legs out so that it'll stay in place while we solder. It switched the soldering iron off while uh, while I was dealing with the technical difficulties there so I got to give it a moment to come back up. But that's okay gives me a chance to enjoy some coffee. That looks like a good join. It wasn't at first. Kind of blobbed up wrong. And that second one is looking good. Clip off the ends here. And then we need, let me trim this off a little bit more. Uh, two very short jumpers that are going to connect uh, this part of the circuit to this side so that the diode is actually pre uh, protecting that side of the circuit. Try not to trip over my mic cable here. Oh, I get some wire. Actually, I don't want to use red for that. I think white, white's a good color for this task.
want to actually keep this wire, at least the part that we see. Oh, this is this is stranded wire. That's not the wire I want. This is the wire I want. This should be the solid core stuff. So like I was saying, I want to keep these because they're really just jumping from one trace to another. Uh, I want to keep them as short as possible. Uh, so I'm going to strip off a big chunk of the insulation there. Get it from the other side. That's probably still a lot longer than we need, but I think it'll be probably good visually. So we see our diode there, and then jump this over here. Apologies, using manual focus lenses, and they're not terribly good at focusing on things this closely. Lay that back down there, and so let me see if I can elevate this camera a little bit more get a little bit more focusing distance here so you can see this a little bit clearer. There we go. That's looking a lot nicer. There's our jumper wire. Now we just need to fold this back over, solder these two points down. That's looking good. Okay. And we need another one of those for the other side. You guys remember when John was here? I miss John. Now we need another one of those jumpers for the other side. Bend a nice U shape in this wire first. That will make it easier to do, get it to do what we need it to. I guess if John's not with us anymore, I don't need to keep wearing these headphones. Trim off these extra two leads here. Clean up our workspace here a little bit. And now we have our diode correctly installed for this circuit. Actually, no, I think we're going to be ultimately looking at it this way. Um, so next thing we need to do is we need to attach um, some, we need to attach a ground to one side of this uh, electromagnet and then pin three to the other. Um, of course, for ground, we're going to use black wire. Uh, 
And we only need to solder down one side of this, which is handy. Well, we could solder down both sides. So we do, thanks to this board here, do have these handy um, ground rails here. But maybe for debugging's sake, we might just go straight into these ground pins here, which correspond directly to the ground pins on uh, our Arduino Uno board. Gonna go and flip this over. Wait, that's not right. We wanna go actually into this trace here. Clip that off, and then we just need to bump the camera. It's always a really important step in all this. Try and keep our wiring as tight and tidy as possible, so try not to leave too much excess here. Almost whack the camera with that. That would have been bad. This is where some tweezers help guide. Well, this is where normally tweezers would help, but I need something maybe a little bit stronger. So little pliers here. Alright, so that's another part of our circuit completed. Now we need the signal wire that's going to go from pin 3 to the other side of the electromagnet on the relay. We're going to be going into this top trace up here. Pull this over while we solder it down. And this needs to connect to digital pin 3. Give my little, myself a little bit more slack than last time. That was tricky to get into place. Apologies, I'm blocking the shot with my hands. That's not useful. I need to go into so got zero, one, two, three. Okay, so that should be good. That should be the first part of our relay circuit completed. Um, now we need to build up the high voltage side of the circuit. And I've got these two terminal blocks here. Um, and one of these I'm gonna have 
be the input from the uh, the input from the power source, um, and the other is going to be the output to the solenoid. Um, and basically, we're going to be using um, find that good pointing device here. Um, so there are basically here is there's the common pin here, and this is where you want one part of your circuit connected to, and this is the normally open. Uh, side of the relay circuit. So that means that when we apply voltage on this side, this side will then close. Um, this one is the normally closed side of the circuit. So right now, this and the common pin are forming a closed circuit and will have continuity. But when we apply voltage here, the electromagnetic switch closes, and then it switches over to this side of the circuit. Um, so that is how this little relay works. Um, and then we'll just form a uh, quick circuit. Um, so let's actually think through this. So let's have it connect the positive side of the voltage. So we're going to have one wire. Let's say this is positive on this terminal block. We're going to go in on the common and have that go out on the positive side of the solenoid. And then we can connect the negative directly over. Sound good? Let's do it. First thing I'll need is some red wire. Is strangely missing from this wire kit. Well, I'll tell you what, this is high voltage, at least with regards to the rest of this circuit, so let's use yellow. I don't know why yellow means more higher voltage than red, but that's the nomenclature that we'll be using in this circuit. This will be our common pin. That's so it's two over from there. And that is going to be coming from the power supply. Fold this over so we can solder it down. Of course, enjoy more coffee. At least until it gives me the coffee hands. All right, so there's that. Now we just want to connect this into this. Actually, no, we can't connect it into the terminal block. That's what the other side of the wire terminal is for. Uh, so we just need to trim off a little bit there. And I may have stripped off a little bit or trimmed it off a little bit too close, but we'll, I think we can make this work. I've got plenty of plenty of slack there. Trim off a little bit more, so I have more to work with on the other side. The, on the other side of the board. Give myself an elbow to bend down. So that's going in there. And let's flip this over and solder it down. We need to solder it down in two places. We need to solder it down 
both on the terminal hole and then get it onto this terminal pin here. I feel like saying, I'm saying terminal a lot. That's OK. A little bit of glare on the board there, but I feel like it adds a little bit of contrast to this image. Okay, so that is that connected. All right, so that's the first part of the high voltage side of our circuit complete. Um, now uh, we can do the other side before attaching the ground pins. Or, and really all we're doing is just attaching this ground pin to this one. Strip this wire off here, and now we're going to feed this through the normally open side of the relay circuit. Fold that guy down. Trim that down, and now we just need to park the other side of this wire into the other terminal block. I feel jealous of you guys in the chat. You get to chat with John and I don't. I just get to build this. But that's okay. little bit of excess to trim off here. All right, a little messy, but that is the, at least the positive voltage of our high voltage circuit complete. Now I just need to connect the ground pins of each terminal. And that we just need a fairly short jumper. off about here. Sometimes it is tricky to 
trim the insulation off of really short pieces of wire. And sometimes it makes it easy using these automatic strippers. I feel like they're less precise, but they get the job done. Right, so we're going to connect that there. And into the other side here. Flip that over and get it ready for soldering. I'm sure it feels like this is slow going, but uh, we're actually making really good progress. There's a few more things we need to do. Uh, soldering wise um, for the enclosure just to make things easy to um, attach and disconnect um, I have some um, DC power jacks to mount to the outside of the enclosure so we need to wire the solder the cabling into those solder the wires into those and then connect them to the terminal blocks and then we also need to attach two potentiometers onto the Arduino or the low voltage side of this board and that is what controls the flow of the water. Um, basically there's one Arduino that controls how long the water valve stays open and the other determines how long it stays closed. And they're fun to play with um, even when you have the circuit dry um, because we have both the relay and the solenoid valve and they both make either delightful or irritating clicking noises depending on how you look at it. All right, so that's, this is starting to come together. Um, now for our relay or for our potentiometers we need to connect them to um, analog pin 0 and 1, so these guys right here, and then they both need to connect to this ground rail and this 5 volt power rail. Uh, and I already have them wired up at least on the um, on the potentiometer side. Let's, let's go ahead and grab them. So here's our potentiometers. Uh, the wires make sense. Well, up until I, I decided to use yellow for the high voltage side of the circuit. Um, so essentially we have red is 5 volt power, black is ground, and the yellow is our signal. So we'll, we'll ignore that decision I made earlier and pretend like this is just normal because this will this will not be carrying 12 volts, at least not on this part of the circuit. I've got a little bit more slack than I need. Trim this off. Famous last words. Uh, and that's the other nice thing about these automatic ones is you can trim a bunch of stuff all at the same time. So that's cool. All right. So as I mentioned, we are going to do 5 volt goes in up here. Ground in here. And I've got plenty of space on this rail, so I'm going to be a little bit indiscriminate here. Flip this over for soldering. And away we go. Get that back into frame. I need another stick of solder.
apologize if you hear that hammering back there. Um, it's getting into the later part of the day and certainly into the maintenance in the, the office maintenance part of the day. So apologies for that. All right, and then this goes into, we'll have to go into analog pin zero. I need to be a little bit careful with these guys to make sure that they don't get jostled about uh, when we're putting it into the enclosure. Now we need to do the same thing for the other potentiometer. Now we'll be re nearly ready to put this uh, enclosure together. Trim the excess off again off of there. Gang these up so I can trim them all the same. I want to take a little bit of a bigger bite there. I want to have a nice long pin for that yellow cable that we're using for the signal uh, to make sure it makes contact. Soldering ones I'm not too worried about. So once again, red into the five volt rail. Black into ground and flip it over for soldering. Make sure you can see this. I'm going to take a moment to check out the chat a little bit here because I feel like I've been neglecting it. And it seems like there's um, some cool discussion going on here, which is great. Uh, maybe not missing quite too much, but it is cool to see this activity going on here. All right. Well. Let's carry on with this. We've just, yeah, we have soldered our two connections here. We're just going to trim off the excess leads. Not too much there. And then get this other yellow lead into analog pin one. And essentially, everything we need to do on this board here is complete, which is pretty exciting. Um, Pull this back a little bit here uh, to focus. Sorry. You can see the full circuit there. Uh, the next thing we just need to do is wire up these terminal blocks and get them ready to be attached into our enclosure. And then uh, almost be time to fire up the old hot glue gun and uh, glue this into place. Or, yeah, just get everything fitted into place. Maybe we won't bother. Uh, gluing down the Arduino. All right. Next, we have these two little guys here. Um, I love these things quite a bit when you're installing something into an enclosure, just because it makes things really nice to plug and unplug stuff. Um, you, you know, it has a standard, you know, just accept a standard 5.5 um, millimeter barrel DC jack um, with the, the outer ring and the, the tip inside there. You just need to solder wires between these two terminals here. We can get this out of the way, um, find ourselves a pair of helping hands because they will be helping out here. 
And again, I still don't have my red wire in here. So we're going to continue to use our yellow and our black. Um, get that. Yeah, we can get that better focus. That looks good. Um, this is the point where I like to. Hey, Mike. Yes. Can you bring me the voltmeter that's on my desk? Um, I like to make sure that. I mean, we can kind of check it visually, but it's always better to check it absolutely to make sure that. Um, it's not going to matter on the solenoid version of one of these, but this one will be for our power supply. And this we need to absolutely make sure that we're connecting the, the pin is uh, positive on our power supply. So I'm going to just check the continuity of this and make sure I'm soldering this together correctly. All right, so now I know that this one is connected to the pin of the of the connection, and then I can double check to make sure that the other side is indeed connected to the sleeve. It is okay. So now we know how to solder this. Get a little bit of yellow wire here. that around. In fact, I'm going to flip this over to the other side so we can have the other helping hand hold the wire for me. Lay it back down so I can get it in better focus. Again, apologies for that banging, if you can hear it. That's annoying. Hook that in there. Grab it. So that is soldered together. Then we can just attach it to our terminal blocks on our proto board here. I'm just going to trim these the same length, but I think that amount of slack is going to be just fine. We'll probably have a little bit more than we need, but that is OK. Okay, so we're going to have power coming in on this bottom terminal block. Bring this up so you can see. Let's get that in focus too. And 
the black into the bottom. It is worth mentioning that I am using solid core wire and solid core wire is actually not the best to use with terminal blocks like this. Um, just because you don't get quite as, the terminal blocks the way they, when you screw them down, they just don't get as good of a grab onto them as they would um, with a, a stranded wire. Um, so that's good, something that's good to know for your own builds. But um, we're going to continue working with the solid core wire here, and we'll just we'll be careful with it. Um, I know some people prefer to use a, um, you know, to tin their braided wire, tin it lightly, so there's, you know, kind of a big glob for the, the terminal block to kind of mash into. Um, and some other, and also to kind of keep the strands organized so you don't have ones that can go wild and then accidentally short your circuit out, which uh, is a good way to have a bad day. All right, so we have our second barrel connector here. and another length of black wire for the other side of this circuit, and then we'll be able to attach this into the other terminal block. Then we'll be able to put the enclosure together. And then we'll be nearly done. Where did my solder go? No, Windows, you are not allowed to restart on me. At least it asks you first now. That's nice. Okay, so that's those two wires that are all connected to the DC jack. Now we can just connect these to the other side of the terminal block, or to the other terminal block, and then we'll be ready to put this all in our enclosure. up better.
Builder's Mark, I have always wanted to create one of those, um, like an automated pet food dispenser kind of thing. Um, but uh, my cats eat only wet food, and I can only see that as being a really short end to being really disgusting. Um, I suppose a treat dispenser would be fun. And especially if you get internet connected and then, you know, people can like, I don't know, tweet at my cats and then, uh, and then dispense food to them. But it probably sounds like a short road to my cats being very fat. All right. So that is our completed circuit. And now we're ready to, well, we can go ahead and plug this into our Arduino, and we have the, uh, actually using the cool Maker Faire special edition Arduino today. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and stack that right on top of here. Okay, I wanted to double check on I'm way poking these uh, things in your eyes. Uh, I wanted to check the clearance of these solder points here. I wanted to make sure they weren't touching the USB jack here because um, that can cause shorts and misery. But we won't do that. Um, and Builder's Mark, I also, uh, I'm, I'm working actually on another pet-based electronics project this weekend. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, I don't know the full story here, um, but her dog needed to have its eyes taken out, which sounds horrible. Um, and so I'm going to be building a, an assistive device for it, um, something that will use a... Um, uh, basically be a, a range finder that will attach to the front of its collar or actually to its harness. And it'll have a little backpack and uh, give it some audio feedback when it's getting close to a wall. The dog is actually already using its own bark as sort of an echolocation to figure out how far away walls are. Um, so it'll, it'll be a little bit of experimentation to get it just right. And I'm, I'm going to be working with a new sensor. Uh, ordinarily I'd use something like an ultrasonic sensor, but I just found this uh, cool and small and lightweight thing that use, uh, uses like basically LIDAR uh, where it fires a laser out and then measures the bounce back to it. They call it uh, time of flight. I haven't worked with it yet, um, but it, this is also a very small dog, so I didn't want to have a big bulky, bulky ultrasonic uh, um, emitter hanging around its neck. So uh, if uh, that is successful, I'm sure you know, the first version of the circuit will be uh, a little bit interesting to figure out what the right settings for it are. It'll be a little bit of an iterative process. And if it's all successful, you'll probably see it on Make Magazine, or at least on, the, on Make Zane. So keep an eye out for that. OK, so back to this guy. Um, I have this circuit, or this enclosure that I've pre-drilled a couple of holes for. Um, the holes here are going to be for our DC jacks. And then the ones up at the top are going to be for our potentiometers. As I mentioned, um, yeah, I definitely um, have much more slack than I need. And let's, uh, I'm not sure if it matters actually, but still I want to keep with um, my idea in mind that this, this DC jack is going to be for the power input and the other one is going to be for our solenoid output. tough time threading this on with that spring clip so 
we're going to forget about it. I guess at this point, I don't, don't think I'll need a, to do any more soldering, so we can switch our soldering iron off for the sake of safety. And the nice thing is we can start to test this uh, before we even connect any of the high voltage stuff. Um, because if this is all working correctly, or at least if part of it is working correctly, we'll hear that relay clicking away um, once we get the code on the Arduino. And spoilers, uh, the code is already on the Arduino. Um, well, we can go ahead and take a look at the code um, before we do that. But if anybody's curious to see how it looks, um, we don't need to bother actually installing it. Not that it takes too long on an Arduino Uno. Unthread these nuts for the potentiometers here. Well, we'll get the washers on the other side too. If I need to get our hot glue gun, so I did print up some cool knobs. Not as cool as I would have liked. Um, I did find on Thingiverse some uh, parametric um, knobs for potentiometers, including some chicken head designs, which are, as you may well know, the coolest of potentiometer knobs. But unfortunately, they were not um, customizable through Thingiverse itself. You had to use SCAD, and I, I have feelings about SCAD. I like CAD software. I like good CAD software. I don't like CAD software that I need to use a command line to do anything with. If I'm going to learn to fly a space shuttle, it better be a space shuttle. Want to go catch up with Chad there a little bit, but everybody's just chatting with John, which is good. He's a cool dude to chat with. All right. And we are glad that he is here. Um, we're going to go the easy route um, with powering the Arduino, unless John tell, tells me this is a terrible idea. And we're just going to power it off of the USB. So I've already cut this. Uh, channel in the enclosure for it. Plug that in there. And that just fits nicely in there. I'm not going to quite close this up just yet. Things could still get exciting on us. I'm going to plug this into the computer. And if all goes according to plan, then uh, we should be hearing our relay clicking away. And I'm not sure that we're hearing that. Which may mean we need to pull this back out and do some troubleshooting. back these knobs off a little bit here. All right, so first part of the troubleshooting first is take a look at our code 
and particularly the serial monitor. All right, so this is our code here. Um, as you see, we have our valve pin, which is pin three. That's what's going to open and close the uh, Arduino. And then we have um, A1 and A2, or A1 and A0 as our opening and closing of the uh, solenoid valve. And just adjust the timing of the, uh, of the valves. And then here we map those uh, analog values as we read them. And then really just set some, uh, um, some delay parameters for how long it is uh, going to be open and shut. I have to tell it manually where the board is to be found. And here we see the report for when it is opening and closing the valves. So something has gone not quite right with how we set this up. So let's figure that out. And learn hard lessons as to maybe why you don't get enthusiastic about putting it in your enclosure. because. I don't think I'm going to be able to debug this while it's in here. Oh well. Oh, it is seems that our screen has frozen again. It actually seems like it froze a while back. Um, stand by, I'm going to be, apologies, I was so hung up on getting this build working, I didn't notice. Um, I'm going to need to restart XSplit again. Uh, and this is the last time I'm using this software. That's my promise to you. Stand by. All right, hopefully you, hopefully we're back. Um, get OBS, you know, I haven't tried OBS in a little while. Um, maybe it's better than XSplit now. I'd love to, I will give it a try. Um, we also have access to a license of um, Wirecast, which is kind of the fancy, I don't know, some people like to think it's the pro version of streaming software. Um, XSplit had some features in it that I liked more that uh, Wirecast didn't have. Um, but things to experiment with before my next stream. I used XSplit for most of this series with no troubles at all. Um, but it's only recently, uh, both at Maker Fair last week and uh, in this stream here, that I've had no end of trouble. Um, so I had a if they're trying to make me not be a fan of XSplit, they're doing a fantastic job of it. Okay. Well, um, you probably, so the last place we probably were is we got our circuit completed um, and it was not working correctly. And pardon me. Well, I just got a notification that my parking is about to expire, so I need to give it a little bit more money. So hang it. So we're going to do some really good content of me paying my parking meter while broadcasting.
There's some, some good internet content here. Um, uh, Joshua Moss is asking what coffee grounds we're using. Uh, we are using uh, a local favorite here of uh, Pete's Major Dickinson's blend. Wait. No, I was trying to sign in, not create an account. John says, I'd recommend taking the analog reads of potentiometers out of the loop. Okay. Um, we, we can start by doing that. Oh, no, it didn't. We're back in, okay. I'm parked for another two hours. I'm sure that's not what you signed up for with this broadcast, um, but that's what we're doing. Okay, so John recommended pulling the analog leads out for testing. We're gonna reconnect this circuit. Okay. So one of the first things we want to do is let's make sure that we are seeing the correct voltage on the pin that should be opening the opening closing the um, let's actually get the our voltmeter in here. That's a big nasty glare. See if I can prop that up on something you can see, see it a little bit better. That's better. Uh, let's actually get it on voltage mode as well. And so this is our pin three that should be opening and closing at various intervals. I'm going to ground this side. Let's also get it out of auto ranging. Not sure what is going on with this thing. All right. That's not the voltage we want. Okay, so we are seeing the voltage rise at the intervals that we should that we should be anticipating, um, but not the voltage we need. So that's probably why we're not seeing any activity on our relay. So let's take this shield off. And test directly on the Arduino if we can. Well, I'm not sure if our leads are going to get quite down in there. We can give it a try or we can actually just test uh, with the um, circuit ties on the back. We'll poke this down in far enough that we can get a decent read. All right, 
So if you see the LED here, that when the LED is lit up, the valve should be open. Um, now of course we're not, so we need to go one or two up from this gap here. We flip this over and four up on this side. And of course we flip this around, so we need to get the other side of the Well, that's interesting. Um, just catching up with some of the comments here. Uh, can we have me check the, uh, plug the potentiometers back in and comments out that part of the code? Um, uh, John, do you mean plugging in the entire proto board with the, with the potentiometers? Maybe you mean that, so let's try that. Okay. So pro John says yes, proto board is back on. Reconnecting these leads to analog zero and one. And comment out that part of the code. I assume he's meaning commenting out the digital reads or the, the analog reads. I'd rather just go with, uh, looks like your fingers are touching the voltmeter. Pins at the same time. Uh, okay, so let's re upload. So now it's no longer paying, ten, paying attention to the potentiometers and just going with the, the hard coded values. So let's go back to our circuit here. I don't get the feedback here of the little LED informing me of, of when the circuit is supposed to be open. Uh, John says comment out 28 and 30 as well. Oh, the mapping portions. I'm going to upload that again. Turn off auto ranging.
All right, so for some reason, we are only getting about half a volt. Where is that voltage drop happening? Is that actually happening on our, yeah, so ground is down there. So I don't quite understand why, is my range wrong? Just not seeing more than half a volt coming off of this board. What could this be? Well, I'd already had the code on the board already, and it was running fine. Um, I'm going to check the voltage just for fun of this power and ground rail. And that is five volts. That is five delicious volts. That is half of a volt. This is a new experience for me with Arduino, but let's just go ahead and try a completely do completely different board. So we get our Arduino unboxing. It even comes with this sticker that says, get the new IDE from Arduino.org. We already have that. Thank you, Massimo, for reminding us. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just, we're going to pop the code onto this board. Jump over to our IDE here, so we already have downloaded it. And we're going to see if the voltage looks right on pin 3. And John says, I would take a look at my relay soldering. That is probably a good call, too. But seeing as I haven't seen the correct voltage coming off of that other board yet, I'm going to hang on to that for now. I want to see that first. Just make sure that this looks like it's running correctly. All right, so I have the, if we see on that LED there, which I guess it's probably a little bit too bright for that LED. Let's wind this. So this little LED here indicates that it's opening briefly 
for like roughly every second. I'm actually going to go into this code and change those values. They're a little bit, makes it a little bit easier on the voltmeter to read. Set the open value to 2500. That's two and a half seconds, and then it'll be closed for two and a half seconds. All right, so that is now done uploading. It's staying open for a nice good long amount of time. Now we can check. Check along with me here. Five volts. All right. So now we're seeing the right voltage. You are now the suspect board. Go ahead, whole hog, and get this proto board back on here and see if it's reporting what we think it should be. I'm going to give it power. And we're not hearing that solar, or we're not hearing that relay clicking, so something is likely amiss. Is it our voltage? Let's see. So something about this soldering has makes the voltage drop. Wonder what that could be. I wonder if it's my diode. Now normally you'd want to have that in there for safety reasons, but I wonder if it is what's messing me up here. Or if I perhaps um, soldered the diode in backwards it's entirely possible um, I think oh yes there's a desktop camera and sometimes there's a person who remembers to switch it back to there apologies okay so I think the first thing we're going to do well the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull I'm going to desolder this diode and just take it out of the loop. So I feel good about the rest of my soldering on the relay. That's exactly how I had it earlier when I was testing this on a breadboard. And if that looks good, then the next thing we can do is maybe try to reverse the polarity of the diode. So that's the guy we got to remove. It's going to be a little bit tricky and going to involve my least favorite task, which is desoldering. Um, get our iron back, heated back up again. Get my solder sucker handy. Have some more coffee, of course.
and get down to work. Joseph Broderick suggests soldering in a temp jumper. That's a great idea, except that all of my... Actually, no, they're not. All of my tie points on this are not um, taken up. So I can do that. I can do that and then just trim it out later. Cool idea. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to solder it in from the top here, or the bottom, depending on how you look at it. Point seven volts from Darren Doherty suggests that that would be in the range of a diode drop. I'm not super familiar with uh, diodes. John suggested it earlier to protect the circuit, even though I wasn't um, I wasn't having any trouble with it. Um, not th not that I'm blaming John for good inspiring good electronics practices in me. Um, but I'm not super familiar with using them a lot. I'm just going to do this as a real quick and dirty solder in here. That way it'll be easy to remove. I mean, I could just kludge this by just breaking the jumper, but I'd rather at least do this as a quick and dirty jumper. That will be easy to remove later on. Easy to remove properly, I should say. Okay. So that's out of the, that's jumpered. Uh, let's get our board back on here. Now let's see what happens when we get our power plug back in. I'm not sure. I thought I had just, uh, and I'm just noticing that the video is frozen again. Um, and I'm going to need to restart XSplit again. Okay, hopefully we're back. Folks can give me a thumbs up when you, when we see the, uh, see that we're back. Then we can get back to, get back to seeing what's going on with this circuit. Now I want to give this a quick listen first, because I thought I heard uh, this thing clicking away, but um, it didn't sound, it doesn't actually sound like it is. It's certainly not behaving like it is. Let's see what kind of voltage we are getting. Let's connect the correct test leads to the correct pins. It 
So now we're seeing no voltage. How does that work? Or near no voltage, because we're in the millivolt range. Let's go over to the volt range, not relying on auto ranging. That's no volts. That's even worse than it was before. What is happening? Patient dead. Not quite. Not yet. Okay, there we're seeing a little close to five volts. But nothing. Nothing when it comes in there. How could this be happening? Now, if I understand, well, let's take a look. Okay, well, what's our next step here? The next step that we can try doing is I can get my bench, bench top power supply and I can see what happens if I supply 5 volts manually to the relay. We'll see if we can get that, uh, we'll see if we can get this, um, this relay clicking. We'll see, we can see if it's the Arduino or if it's, check soldering for a short to ground somewhere. Can you throw an LED in that pin instead of the relay for a moment? Mm. Tricky if I were, it's a bit trickier. I suppose I can touch an LED manually to it. Let's give that a try. find ourselves an LED here. Let's go the green one. Where are my tweezers? So I'd like to be able to hold this in a way that you can see it light up as well as me. And I'm not seeing any LED activity on here. I mean, I am just manually touching these contacts. LED from pin to ground. 
Um, I have a ground rail here. Not seeing anything there. Um, t -t -t remove the relay. Okay, so after John's suggestion of going from there to ground, uh, we indeed have a blinking LED. All right, so what did we learn from this? John says, take a look at the relay soldering. Again, I immediately suspect that maybe my soldering around the the diode is bad. If the diode is here and here, and all these connections, I'm going to pull out this jumper. Yeah, because otherwise the relay pins are here. All that is a uh, that is not the best soldering job I see on one of these coil pins. I wonder if that's where our troubles are. I mean, it looks like it should be making a solid connection, but let's, let's do a little bit more and make sure that connection is a little bit more solid. And indication that our signal diode could be backwards. That, uh, that could very well be true. Um, I'm going to remove the diode. I'm also going to remove this jumper. This is where I really will need my tweezers to get this diode out of here. I'll get my solder sucker first. That was not a good first hit.
exposed marks. We keep asking about my hammer. Well, where is my? Let's just say we don't want it to come quite to that just yet. But when it comes time, we'll, we'll, we'll have this guy at the ready. We'll just keep that under the bench. And in the meantime, just keep on desoldering. And I think, I don't, I can't remember what the name of it is, but I know that Adafruit sells it. A very, very nice desolder, or very nice solder sucker. Um, I think I'm going to buy that. Because, well, these cheap ones are cheap. That's about all they have going for them. All right, this is the point where, again, I keep saying this, keep not solving the problem, but I need to find my electronics tweezers. You can pull this guy out. A good side to grab this whole board from. Well, that's the trouble, builders, Mark, is that we did a I did a pre-build before. I mean, it doesn't make much for a very good live build if I'm just pre-building the whole thing and then just plugging in and saying, "See, that's how you do it." Um, but some people have argued that this is actually the best part of the build, is, you know, because it doesn't always go the way you need it to the first time. And uh, I mean, I'm actually learning, especially from somebody who's better at this than me, from John, how to properly debug this stuff. Uh, how do I want to try and desolder this? Oh, this solder sucker is not picking up anything.
Yep, this is live. This is live debugging of a circuit that I put together incorrectly. I think I'm getting down to the point of kludge force. We're just going to, there is more diodes where this diode came from. And it'll be easier to desolder those holes with it out of the way. First things first, let's see how the circuit works without that diode in the loop. Also, it looks like we're having a healthy discussion about desoldering. That's great. All right, we're going to go for the gusto here. We're going to reconnect pin three to there. Um, let's not connect this. Reconnect this proto board with the Arduino powered up. But let's, fingers crossed. All right. Hey, I heard a click. I heard a click. That's a relay clicking. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm going to put this right up to my, uh, right up to my microphone and Clicky, clicky, clicky. Um, so this may not be the safest version of this circuit in the world, uh, but we're going to go without the diode. We're just, we're just going to go without it. Okay. Um, but while we're testing here, let's go whole hog with this testing while we've got it out of the enclosure. Let's connect the... Arduino to power, or, to, or let's connect the high voltage side of the circuit, and then connect the solenoid. Um, I actually have a pretty short leash on this power supply here, so I think I'll need to reposition the camera. All right, got 12 volts in. All right, so we can see that that's connected. And then let's connect our solenoid. And then we should hear some excellent clicking. Now you can't actually see it because we've got it all sealed up at this point, but this is our solenoid valve. I think you can probably hear it. Now that big click is the solenoid valve opening and closing. There's a little piston in here um, that magnet pulls in, it retracts, opens for the flow of fluid through here. And then uh, allows it to the water to to pour out and then pour into our coffee grounds and produces a big satisfying honk whenever it opens okay let's come back to our main camera here actually the well the next thing we need to do is we need to upload our code correctly again so that the code is once again paying attention to the um, potentiometers. I 
not supposed to decomment that. That's actually a comment comment. But I do want to decomment these. And let's re-upload this. Get a little pause in the racket. And I think you can probably still hear that solenoid opening and closing. And now we can twiddle with these to the right generally means less time. One of these up varies the amount of time that's open, and the other is the amount of time that's closed. Let's go back to our desktop camera here. Let's turn these way down. Okay, so we still don't have our diode in the circuit there, but I think we're okay without it. Um, so the next part is let's put this, let, well, let's get the power out of it. Um, let's put this back in our enclosure and let's get this thing ready to install. And then we will be nearly done. All right, so let's. First, disconnect the 12 volt power. Set aside our solenoid for now, and then eventually we'll need to fill that guy up with water and attach it to our um, fill the guy up with water and attach it to our, our coffee brewing wall here. Um, but first, enclosure. And I hope I have managed to not lose all of the hardware for reattaching this stuff. Now these big fat washers go with potentiometers similar to these big fat lock nuts. And we have locked up the video again, which means we'll need to All right, and hopefully we are back. All right, so now we are just going on with, apologies for that again. I'm going to go to a XSplit HQ and burn the place to the ground. We can do this. We still have Caleb's shish kebab from Fallout 3. Fallout 4. That's the one. I don't think that's the right nut. Thank you for your patience with our technical difficulties today. Both the ones that are part of this build and the ones that are not. At least the ones that are part of the build, you can, we can learn something from. Like, don't solder your diodes in backwards. All right, there's our potentiometers in place. 
get a little bit more slack on the side there. And this one will be our connection for the solenoid. thread on there. That's why I felt like it wasn't threading on, because it wasn't threading on. Hello, Pablo. Hello to Argentina. Okay, and the last part we need to do, disconnect it from the computer for a moment, but connect this power lead, otherwise known as our Arduino cable, or our USB cable. Um, fit that in there, and then put the lid of the enclosure on. It's got a face. It's got a cute little face. Look at him. Got two eyes and a little, like, elephant snout. It's got a face. And if you don't follow the Faces and Things Twitter account, you ought. Because it is a delight. Um, we've got these little cute 3D printed knobs. They sort of do a friction fit on. But they were also a little bit loose when I first tested them. These actually feel pretty good right now. Maybe there's a little bit of a temperature change. We're gonna leave them as is. Oh, they feel a little bit loose when I press them all the way on. If I back them off, they keep a decent amount of tension. That one's a little loose. We'll make do with it for now. Okay, um, for this next part, I will need to step away because I need to fill this full of water and then climb up there and attach it. And this solenoid valve is so heavy it wants to tip over. So I need to zip tie it in place. So first things first, I need to um, go over to our kitchen and fill it full of ice and water and then come back and get it into place. And uh, for that bit, I will need to uh, disconnect my microphone. I'm on a wired microphone here. Um, we're nearly done. We're nearly there. We're nearly to starting our cold brew, but unfortunately we won't be actually brewing just yet. The voltage meter is yelling at me. Oh, Mike is offering to help out. I will get uh, water and ice. Okay, yeah, get it ice and maybe fill it up with water up to about here. Okay, yeah. much ice? Uh, as much as we have, okay. which probably isn't much. Um, so yeah, that was, um, are we labeling the inputs and outputs? That is not a bad idea considering that, um, you know, we just all flipped this all around. Uh, let's do that while hello. Um, uh, hi. Hello. 
Yeah, tomorrow, vacuum, okay. Yeah. Or I can vacuum it later on tonight. Huh? I can vacuum it later on tonight as well. You mean the, the dust down there? Yeah. Um, uh, or I can vacuum it. It's fine. Uh, you, you, yeah. Yeah, you're working. I yeah, we can. I tomorrow, ten, okay. Either way. Yeah, if, okay. if, it's, if it's still there tomorrow, we can... We... Yeah, okay, tomorrow, tomorrow, here. Yeah. Yeah, because you are working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just chatting with the building maintenance staff here. Um, so we have one label for power. Switch that over to here. You can see that. Power is our lower one. And I had to uh, trim this enormous sideboard down here with uh, uh, a jigsaw because uh, it wasn't going to get it through this bandsaw here. And uh, yeah, I didn't have a chance to clean up the dust from it yet. Um, so that's power, and then we'll label the other one valve. Not to be confused with the valve software company. And just in time, Mike is back with our carafe of mostly water and not much ice. Not much ice. Um, That's all we have. And now I actually need to we got that labeled. Now I've got to Get a handy zip tie and a footstool. So I need to climb up to, what's the best way to see this? You only see, I'm just gonna point this up at this top shelf here. Seen up into the rafters of our little studio here. And then I'm just going to use a zip tie to attach this to this top bar here because this solenoid valve, as I mentioned, is heavy enough that it wants to just pull this thing off this shelf. So feed it through. I've got another zip tie around the collar here um, to help secure the jar in place. All right, then we need to fit this hose into our coffee grounds. And then we will be, it's not a dead chicken, it's a rubber chicken. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at this next stage here where we're going to be installing our electronics. I've misplaced the screws for my enclosure. So we're going to go to my second favorite way of sealing stuff up, gaffer's tape.
All right, so we can get this set up in here. We can plug in our valve. Move my beverages out of the way here. I need a short extension cord. This power supply is on a short cable. Come back to me here for a moment. If I get this stuff plugged in. And now we have the high voltage side of our Arduino connected and then when we connect the Arduino to power, we should have some exciting activity going. And by exciting activity, these things were all the way down. That was interesting. There we go. Double check when you use a power strip in place of a of a extension cord. You need to make sure you have the power turned on. Okay, and we've got the solenoid valve opening and closing. I don't know if you can quite see that. You might be able to see, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit closer, get things nicely in focus. As John suggested, maybe we might have a a little bit too much water flow from this. See how well we can control it here. But we can see here we're starting to get some coffee. John is suggesting a Longer interval, lower timing, but we've got coffee happening. Huh. Well, that was quite the adventure. Um, again, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for all the troubleshooting and everything we had to do uh, to get to this point. Um, never trust me with diodes ever again. Uh, that's the lesson to be learned from this. Um, and of course, thanks to everybody who uh, chimed in with the chat and, and stuck around with us for this long to, uh, to see us get to this point of, of delicious coffee brewing. Um, once again, I want to thank uh, DigiKey, um, the 
folks who make this show possible. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, once again, they are an electronics distributor based here in North America. Uh, they ship out very fast. They have tons of components. Anything you need to build this project or any other project you want to work on. Um, they're a fantastic partner. They make this series possible. And uh, once again, if you get um, put, it, put together an order list from them, they ship out nearly on the very next day. Um, I also want to thank John for sticking out, or first for creating this project, because uh, it's amazing. I can't wait to try this coffee tomorrow when we finally have a complete brew. Um, and also for uh, joining us initially, um, we had some technical issues there with um, with uh, the the Google Hangout, and so he couldn't join us in person, but he's been with us in the chat and helping along with the troubleshooting this whole time. So thank you very much, John, for joining. And uh, once again, thank all of you for sticking this out and, uh, and joining us on this live stream. Um, once again, uh, thank you very much. Thanks to DigiKey. And um, other things coming up, uh, the this isn't just the, this is actually the live build that we were supposed to do in September, but we had a scheduling conflict with World Maker Fair, which we just wrapped up a few weeks ago. Um, our next build uh, with Make Live is coming to you very soon. We're actually going to be doing it, not this coming weekend, but the next weekend uh, from the Autonomous Vehicles Competition, the Spark Fun AVC 2017 in Denver, Colorado at Maker Fair Denver. Uh, we're going to be building a, an autonomous car uh, based around a Raspberry Pi, so don't miss that. But uh, until then, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello. 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 What do you want? I just need a TI launch pad. Can't you see I'm busy here? Don't, Don't be held hostage by the board, board order. Go to digikey.com to find thousands of boards in stock all ready for immediate shipment.